everybody. This is Bradley Grunner, and we are here with Moss Macros Podcast number 14, titled Lab Coats versus Bodybuilding. And I'm here with uh, my usual uh, partner, uh, Stu Yellen. And uh, we're going to get right to this. Uh, Stu, what do we mean when we're saying by the term lab coats? I mean, we know what a bodybuilder is, but what do we mean, mean by lab coats? Versus bodybuilders. People in a lab, usually we think of a professor, we think of a scientist. What are we talking about here? Well, we, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for everyone listening, me and Brad kind of batted back and forth how, how we were going to phrase this because we really wanted to uh, encompass, uh, I'll, I'll say, several different types of, of uh, person, character, however you want to yes. put this. Um, basically, these, these are the people, uh, these are the armchair experts. Uh, these are the people that... Uh, maybe they do have uh, legitimate degrees, but they've never actually walked the walk themselves. Right. Um, but they were very quick to tell people doing it what they're doing right. wrong. Uh, these are people that stay at home uh, or they're constantly on social media, uh, constantly quoting studies. PubMed says this. This guy says that. This is a, but, but they've never done it themselves. Um, they're not coaching countless, countless top, top, yes. top competitors. Um, but again, they're they're always the first one to point out what you know these these obviously uh, uh, uninformed, misinformed, uh, uneducated bodybuilders are doing wrong, right. despite the fact that results obviously show otherwise. Right. And one thing that I've noticed also is that if we go over the people who are the ones training elite bodybuilders, or at least not training, let's say, elite bodybuilders, but getting re guys really shredded, you know, mm -hmm. even middle of the pack people shredded, you know, really guiding anybody from, let's say, you know, naturals in some federations like the IMBF, ANBF, WMBF, to guys that are in the pro leagues like IFBB, right, or mm -hmm. NPC. We're talking about guys like, you know, um, uh, Scott Abel, Chris Aceto, Fakri Mubarak, um, the, uh, Chad Nichols, right? Now, what I notice is, those guys are from a previous generation, most of the ones I mentioned. I'd also like to mention Tom Venuto also, Clay Height. Um, those guys Dr. are... Dr. K, Klimzewski. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Kl yeah, Kl yeah, Dr. K. Now, I noticed those guys don't make a reputation or a hobby of themselves of, I guess, belittling, harassing. I mean, this ranges from belittling... Ridiculing. Ridiculing, harassing, belittling, acting like a wise ass about this. I mean, and, and plenty of these guys are very smart people. Tom Venuto, I think, has a degree in exercise physiology. Uh, Chris Aceto has a bachelor's in nutrition. Um, Scott Abel has an unrelated degree, but he knows how to deal with people. He was a social worker, I believe, but, you know, kind of unrelated. But we're, we're talking about a guy who, who can decipher information. So they don't do that. I've not seen it from them. Or maybe if they do it, they keep it to a limit. They just want to point some things out. They're the ones getting the results with actual bodybuilders, and they don't feel the need to do that. So, would you venture to say that this is a form of, not to go off topic too much, because we want to go on to our next subtopic, I believe this is a form of resentment, meaning that these guys have not walked the walk themselves, either the bodybuilding was too hard, and rightfully so, it is damn too hard to do this stuff for most people, I'm not going to, I am not going to discredit or belittle anybody who doesn't want to go through a contest prep, but if you haven't done it, at least gotten shredded and understand what it feels like to go through a contest prep mentally, physically, emotionally, etc. I think you can contribute to this world of fitness and bodybuilding, but you might want to watch your step a little bit. What, what do you think? To be decent, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, it's funny because people people always throw out the, uh, uh, <laughs> you know where we're going with this, uh, the best basketball coaches weren't the best basketball right. players. Um, okay, but, but... Uh, there's such a, a, a physicality, there's such a visual component in in, in, in bodybuilding that you have guys that, um, you know, the, the, what the expression, do you even lift? You know? Right. Uh, you have guys that are putting themselves out there as prep coaches, as experts, as bodybuilding coaches, uh, who their physiques just, they look like high school athletes. And, you know, aside from the fact that they've never gone through all the mental aspects of, of, of being uh through a prep or being through, you know, the, the, the grueling extended uh, course of, of bringing your body fat level down so, so low while maintaining adequate muscle mass, um, you, you, you can't pretend to know what that's like yes. no matter uh, the fact that, oh, I can quote studies or this guy's a respected coach and he, he, he gave me his approval that, that I know what I'm talking That's a load of crap. Exactly. I mean, uh, you know, but the thing is that most, you know, let's say 
uh, let's say, uh, coaches of even professional athletes, uh, coaches of teams, uh, maybe they weren't the best basketball player or the best baseball player, but they did play baseball. Meaning that what we're saying here, what I'm saying, and I'm sure you agree with this, is that, okay, maybe you don't need to compete in order to give advice. That That's the line they're telling us. They're saying that, well, I don't really need to do it in order to give the information. But the thing is, they're not competing at all. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, they're not even going through it all. The guy who was, a, let's say, a middle-of-a-pack basketball player who's now coaching basketball at least played basketball in an in competitive setting. They did it at least. They weren't the best, but they did it. The guys who were, who are, let's say, lauded as gods of this stuff, who are making their habits of ridiculing people, um, or of just being overall smart asses with PubMed and Google, um, and we haven't gone over those uh, um, internet tools yet. We'll get to that. Also, is that they, they they haven't been a bodybuilder at all, meaning that they haven't even done it though. You got to do it at least be middle of the pack in order to, to say what you you know what you're doing. Well, I, I was gonna say I think I, I think Lane had had once said I don't know if I, if I read this or I heard him on a podcast. Um, he said that the best bodybuilding coaches uh, are the guys that are average pros. Yes. Okay. Because the best pros know what they're doing to some degree. To some degree. Okay. They don't have to know everything, but they obviously know what what tools in their nutrition tool bag to use, um, and and have the best genetics. That's, that's how you get to the top. But to get to the, I'll say the lower tier pro levels, um, you may not have the genetics for it, but you ain't getting to that level. Yes. Unless, unless you know what you're doing, and I'm not talking quoting studies, but you know how to use that information. Yes. And 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 there it is. Right. But let's 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 go over what the, what they're doing. Do they they have this habit of let's say, I mean, what do these guys do? They shuffle studies around. I mean. Look, I think that I should add some input here. You know, I'm a dietitian. I'm a registered dietitian. I've been through a dietetic internship. I passed my RD exam. I got a master's degree in nutrition and exercise physiology. Um, uh, I have an undergraduate in nutrition. Uh, my mentor is Doug Kalman. Uh, for my thesis was Doug Kalman, the founder of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. You know, I think that I know a great deal of nutrition. My full-time job is in dietetics. But really, how much of my knowledge do I really need to have in order to build a nice body or step on a stage? I need a minimal level of competence in nutrition, how to do that. Most of what competition prep is, is contest prep rather, is just knowing how to manipulate the three macronutrients and your caloric level in conjunction with your uh, weight training and cardio. W wouldn't you say as a successful coach that you've been there, that that's really all that's needed considering you don't even have a degree in, in nutrition? I mean, you've read about nutrition. You have certifications in training and nutrition. However, is do we need to go beyond that? Do we need to read study after study? We've been doing this. Bodybuilders have been doing this. What's... Uh, I, I always say since the 50s. But even before that, I've seen some guys... Oh, I'm that sure were, before that. I've seen some guys that were actually very shredded from the 30s and 40s. Those guys knew something. Well, dude, I've yeah. all right. I've I've known yeah. a couple of you know friends of mine, WMBF yes. pros, who know, and I'll tell you, know next to nothing about nutrition. Exactly. But they're very in tune with paying attention to what seems to work yes. for them. Exactly. Seems to work for them, and they're not going around online saying this is how you do it. No, no, they just quietly right. do their thing and show up in shape, and and will tell you, I couldn't coach someone else because I just know what right. works for me. Right. On the flip side of the coin are people that seem to make it uh, out that it's much more complicated than it is. Exactly. And that's just, you know, a little, uh, what is it? Um, um, let, let's talk about the title. You know, you if I don't, for anyone listening, uh, you know, you meet you meet a trainer, you meet a coach, uh, and you look at it, and there's a special title. They're, they're a physique technician. They're a physique yes. architect. Yes. A phys <laughs> okay, dude, seriously? Everyone who understands this is working with the same exactly. information. Yes, it, it, you're not, you're not magic. You don't have yes. some special secret shit. Um, g get over it. Yes, like get over it. Because I even remember a good interview with um, uh, Jake Culler. He's being interviewed uh, by um, Jerry Ward. Uh, what is that guy named? Bio something. Well, anyway, I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, but the Jerry Ward. I like his channel. You know, the guy's pretty sensible. However, he was interesting. He he's friends with Jake Culler, I think, and he was interviewing Jake Culler. Um, and uh, Jay Cutler um, said, look, bodybuilders all do the same shit. And, yeah, they do little different tweaks here and there. But I understood what Jay was saying, though, right? I mean, 
you set your protein amount, you set your caloric amount, you fiddle with the carbs and the fats, and what else is really, what else? I mean, you have to have good judgment, though. The judgment matters more than the actual plethora of nutritional information and, you know, and, and how nutrients affect your hormones and is this a good food to eat or not? I mean, we're all dealing with the same shit here. I mean, even let's we look at training. Let's break it down real quick because we don't have forever. If you do, let's say, we see all these guys doing all this stuff with the study saying, well, in this study, the frequency, meaning training a body part twice and three times per week is far better than training it once every five to seven days like all those genetically gifted pros are doing, which is not true. I think I could actually say that it's absolutely not true because I've seen guys with mediocre genetics excelling on typical bo bro splits, training once a body part, a body part once every five to seven days with three to five, two, anywhere from two to five exercises per body part. Five is for sometimes for the back, but generally speaking, two to four exercises per body part, three or four sets each, moving on and that's it. Well, really, what else is there? There's a blend of isolation movements. You choose what's best for your body. Maybe a dumbbell bench works better than a barbell bench for yourself, or you like a safety bar squat better than a, a, back, a back squat with a barbell. I mean, really, besides that, what, what else are we getting down to? I can't even Dude, think I, I, I always say the, the, you know, the, the training approach, the training method, the training, whatever you do, is the least important thing. Right. You know, but look, you you, you got to sell your articles, so there you right. go. Now, the faith, of course, the faith in the program, but there is an art to doing this, meaning that if you look someone, even me, I have some experience, I competed, um, you know, not as much as I want to, but uh, I, I have shown that I could get down to a shredded body fat level and look like a bodybuilder. Uh, my photo's available online for everybody to see. Uh, Stu, wouldn't you think this is where the art comes in, meaning that this is more of an art than a science, meaning that when I was working with you, we got to look at the body and say, what are the best body exercises for a limb-dominant person or a torso-dominant person? A guy with, let's say, stringy arms and a massive chest, how are we going to bring his arms up? Or are we going to reverse? Guys who have overpowering arms with a, a narrow chest. This is where the art comes in, and I think it's much more than reading studies. It's much more significant and consequential than using studies, I believe. Well, dude, I agree with you. You know, I mean, look, you see what I do with clients. I've got like a four, yes. four or five page questionnaire. Yes. You assess the physique. You look at what they've already been doing. And, you know, you, I don't want to say you, you make your best guess, but really you make your best guess. Uh, has this frequency been working? Has this volume been working? Has, again, you, you, based on what you've seen with other clients, which is why, you know, when you see a, a brand new contest prep coach who's never competed, taken himself through preps, um, can just quote studies left and right, everything he's read, but doesn't have the experience, what, what are you basing any of it on? Because, you, again, you don't even have your own experience to go for. Right, exactly, exactly. See, that that's that's what I'm getting down to here. I'm getting to the art is more important than the so-called science. Now, and sometimes, you know, what I find surprising is that there are many people out there, like, you know what, this is a free country we live in you're free to follow whatever you know this is a hobby you're free to follow whoever the heck you want to follow you want to follow these guys think they're great fine that's fine I, i'm not trying to be this savior to people but however in some ways i do want to help people i actually truly want to help guys that want to get checked because you know what it was important to me it still is important to me to a degree but i remember spinning my wheels when i was younger and i think i could have been farther along this whole way if i didn't get um sidetracked from these people, I mean, they were they're giving information that really is not as is not producing the best bodybuilders, and um, uh, a lot of them have been called researchers. Now, I think the word researcher has appealed to people who are not in the know or very impressionable and or young people. You hear the word researcher and you think expert. You think of Oh my God! This guy like knows this sophisticated information. He he must have something that I don't know. Where I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. This guy got to the bottom of this. The bottom of it is right in the gym, right before your eyes. Well, well don't you agree with that? I mean, the bottom of it is in the goddamn gym. <laughs> well, dude, that's the thing. <clears throat> the there, there, there's been a flip in like the last decade or so yeah. from going to the gym, looking at what the guys that are getting results are doing, and trying to find some common theme there to. Just assuming that anyone who's jacked is either on steroids or uh, has awesome genetics and they could do anything and they'll be huge. Now, that's a very, very um, overgeneralized uh, dismissal. Yes. You know? And I mean, look, let's face it. 
are there guys that can do anything and you know they're they're gonna get results sure that whole he's he's succeeding uh, in spite of what he's doing which is a way of saying yes. that you're doing it wrong but if it's only a few people well I don't know but remember you know you look great I look like crap but it's only because you have good okay dude shut up you sound stupid saying shit like that right exactly okay? and this is what you're gonna hear a lot uh, online this is what you're gonna hear from uh, should we call them lab coats you know and again we're going to try not to drop guys' names because, again, we, you know, they've they've got their groupies, they've got their fans. Yes, and, exactly. Uh, you know, the few times we've actually, uh, Brad or I, have like mentioned things close to what we're talking about right now on social media. Um, people get upset. They go, they go running and tell so and so, yo, this 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 guy online yes. said something bad, about, dude. And you and and what nine out of ten times the people that are getting upset that we said something bad about about their heroes, um, they're really not having a very impressive physique on their own. Right. You know, it's, so it's right. like, what, we cut down their, the guy they look up to? I mean, it, dude, right. because, something's not working here. Right, because every time we've mentioned this on our favorite forum or somewhere on Facebook, someone gets very annoyed at this and you look at them and they don't look like a bodybuilder. Now, I'm not saying people have to look like a bodybuilder, but but that's the way you identify someone's competence in bodybuilding. Bodybuilding is not, the end result is not dependent on a skill per se. So if you don't look like a bodybuilder, so you're doing something wrong. Yeah, you're doing something wrong. You know, and again, accepting the fact that not everyone has the genetics to be an elite pro. Right, like, exactly. like, like we know that. Yes. But, dude, if you're putting the time in, if you're eating, if you're training, if and several years went by and you don't look better than you did, then you're doing something wrong. Right. You should reconsider your training. You should reconsider the way you're doing things. You might actually benefit from a bro split. Uh, and and then okay, but, but back to the research thing. Also, mm -hmm. let's get something clear here as well. We went through the uh, mystique, or um, uh, I, I don't know how to say it, the the lure of this researcher title. Okay. Well, dude, we used to see those ads with Joe Weider wearing a lab coat, <laughs> okay, right, 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 in like okay. a science lab, and <laughs> everyone right, thought, right, right. "Wow, that's awesome!" There, right, right. Obviously, there's more than just sawdust exactly. and cocoa powder in his weight gainer. Exactly, or or you know, it's supposed to actually get the reason, like the old Muscle Mag articles, where they would actually get like a guy who has a PhD in nutrition mm. and have him as part of like the whole thing, and then have like this chart in the grip with a study of like oh, was protein synthesis. Sure. And then, you don't understand is that that guy might actually be a real researcher. Guess what? He might actually believe in the supplement that he's, you know, doing the advertisement for, but he also wants his money also. Just because you're a PhD, you have a PhD, doesn't mean that you don't like money. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> they usually like money quite a bit. <laughs> exactly. So uh, just because someone has a degree doesn't mean they're going to do everything that's really uh, in line with... Uh, I would say scientific ethics per se, or professional ethics. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, oh, well, I mean, look, what was uh, was it Doctor Oz when yeah. there was that whole like what uh, he got called like a whole so was it a Senate hearing, and he's trying to defend the fact that you know he he pimps shit on his show, right? That has like no medical scientific basis to support on yes. it. Yes, and there's this guy who's who has no knowledge in nutrition, yes. none. He's a surgeon. Yes, he's a surgeon. He may be a great surgeon. I don't know, exactly. but he has no schooling yet. Any nutritional Inter science, yes. and he's trying to defend himself, saying, "Well, I, I honestly believe in these things." And they're right. like, "Oz, shut up!" Like, exactly. like he, they took him apart. Exactly. That's that's one thing. But now let's get back to the actual title, researcher. You have an advanced degree. I have an advanced degree. Um, uh, the word researcher. Okay. We can all research something. We can all go on the internet like everybody else does and go to PubMed and go to a library, a university library, and take out the microfiche and, uh, you know, do all that jazz and look up the reference, you know, of a, of a study and hunt it down in the library. We're all capable of researching something. However, the word researcher in a professional sense implies that someone is doing real peer-reviewed research. Like, for example, with the uh, the uh, debate, well, that never happened, actually. The debate that oh, Lane, Jason and, Lace, Lane and Jason <laughs> Blaha. I like the fact that Lane Norton has a PhD and is a researcher who called out the fact that everyone that Blaha wanted as a so-called researcher or a mediator of the debate actually is not a researcher, and Lane called him out on that. Yep. All three, I think it was three men, who... Blaha wanted as um, 
I don't know, arbitrators or mediators uh, or whatever the heck you call mess. it to the to this debacle. They're not researchers. So a lot of people are giving themselves a title, including some of these clowns online calling themselves researchers, and they well, it's, it's like you said. You know, look, I, I, we're talking about Jason Blaha. Here's a guy who everything he talks about, he just Googles. Yes. He Googles, he Wikipedia's, whatever the hell he does. And then he talks about, and here, here's the expression, we found that, okay, you didn't find anything. Yes, we found okay. Yes, he's got you, 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 Oh, you know what? No. You found it by entering into Google. Exactly. But he makes it sound like he actually had firsthand knowledge. He was there on the yes. I, I remember I had a whole email exchange with Lane when he was still in, I guess he was still in grad school, and I had read something about Lucy, and we kind of went back and forth a little bit. And, you know, he, he was right there. I forget the uh, uh, the doctor that he was working with, but they were, they were studying this, and they were actually right there you know i'm i'm sure they were in lab coats so uh there you go but uh, <laughs> yes but he that that's that that's real research yes Not, exactly i googled something and i found an article on bodybuilding.com you know written by some 19 year old kid uh, because he wanted a twenty-five dollar coupon because that's how they pay. Yes. Um, that that's not that's not doing research. Exactly. And now also let's get back to this term background. What what is the word background? Oh mean? my god! Well, dude, that's something that Blaha you, you mentioned <laughs> exactly. a lot. You know, if you if you go back like his old stuff, he says, "Well, I had a background in, in kinesiology. I had Bio a background in medicine. Yeah. I had a background in the back, the, all all these backgrounds." <laughs> and you know, we it was it we we were on one of the forums and we dug up like an old thing where. Uh, and this is before all like the real information came out about who this idiot was, and and, and someone said, yeah, you know, he, he was a former powerlifter. He got hurt. Uh, he has a PhD and blah 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 blah. Now I don't know where that rumor started, and I guess he just kind of let people, you know, yeah, believe this incorrectly but until they eventually found out he did like what half a year of community college before failing out. Um, but he would say in his videos, I have a background in X, Y, or Z. Now. Look, I, I've mentioned before when I started my undergrad work, I was pre med. I've mentioned that you know I, I needed my electives in college, and this is like early early nineties. I took nutrition classes, I took a couple coaching classes. It was just interesting stuff. I would never say I have a background in nutritional sciences, especially you know my friend Brad here who actually has degrees right. in this stuff. Yes, yes, exactly. So th th that's what we want to get 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 uh, to the bottom of. Also, is the background thing. The background. I I don't know what a background means really. <laughs> I, I don't know, but you know what? I mean, you know, forget backgrounds. It's yes. like there, there, there's some great bodybuilders that don't have a background in this stuff. Exactly. You know, and that's, that's you know, I mean, if, 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 come back to the whole lab coat bodybuilder thing. It's like no one cares about your background if you can't apply it. No one exactly. cares if you got a degree in this if you can't apply it. And that's, that's you know, it's interesting. I was, I was going through some books the other day, and uh, I, I love accumulating books. It's 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 a problem. Um <laughs> But, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of, uh, you know, other coaches out there that I like. Whenever they come out with their little books for $5 or $6, you know, I order a copy. You know, maybe there's something I'm missing. You know, maybe this guy's got a different approach than what I do. And, again, I know we're all working from the same science. And I read these things and I realize this person does not know half of what most people think they do. Right. It's a very simple way they're applying just some very, very basic, basic stuff. And... They continually uh, bring their clients into shows, looking great, without all the crazy heavy science that that these lab coats, that these people that are constantly on social media, um, you know, ranting and and and, and you know, uh, putting out a you know, a, I guess what should I call it a derogatory angled comment yes, about yes, you know constantly. bodybuilders, people that don't have their uh, was it what do they call it scientifically backed or yes, evidence based, yeah. evidence research, based. Right? that's evidence based that's the new term evidence-based meaning if you can't find a study to support anything you're doing you shouldn't be doing it yes well okay but i have 10 friends that all compete and they've all won their pro cards and they all look awesome all the time and this always works um i'm thinking i might try what worked for all of them because yes. even though my genetics are different i'm willing to bet that i would probably see some results from this too exactly um and you know, one example here is this, though, is that, you know, I, I don't I want to toot my own horn because it's not like I did all this damage in bodybuilding. You know, I did a bodybuilding show later in life and I earned a natural pro card uh, with the AMBF, which I really loved uh, experiencing. And uh, I'm, what I'm saying here is that I'm, I'm a middle of the pack guy, too. What I'm saying, mm -hmm. trying to get here is that I would look at information like I would go back to like old interviews with Jay Cutler and see what he was doing. But I would realize, look, I'm not Jay Cutler. 
he's one of the, he was the best for a while, mean mm-hmm. the best. But what can I take from him? Now, can I endure the volume that Jay Cutler did? Can I do two a day sessions? Can I do like you know, uh, you know, hamstrings in the morning and come back at night? Like he's had a variety of routines. Some of it was just like the volume would like like pulverize most people with a job, let alone not on gear. But I said to myself, like, what is Jay doing that has made him so successful? Can I benefit from him? I actually took little clips and clues from him, and it actually it worked. It felt good actually. You know, Jay says. Rest as little as possible. He doesn't mean do another set while you're hopping a pub, but he says try and keep the pace fast. Um, don't go to failure. See how many sets you can get out of an exercise. You know, don't set a limit on the sets. You know, when you had enough of the exercise, move on to the next. And I said, wow, this is a really enjoyable way of training, and it produced results. And that's similar to the way you train. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, we're not like the most like I think you're better than James than I do, but we're, we're not top of the line like, you know, thoroughbred. You know, like type of but you know 10 out of 10 scale bodybuilders but we've used those things and they've worked actually we've made modifications to them so wouldn't you think that we're good examples of seeing what worked for the best and benefiting from it and not only that is that when i said the bottom of it is in the gym i mean you should look meaning if i want to help you um there are people in your gym probably that are successful who are not lab coats who can give you the pretty much basic formulas and how to do things wouldn't you agree yeah and, and again and that's that's not saying that you're going to find some person in the gym that is going to give you great advice. Just like you're not going to find someone who can quote a study who's going to give you advice that's guaranteed to work. You know, and I think any generalization uh, on either side, uh, you know, has a you know chance of being right, chance of being wrong. Um, but again, if, if if your goal, if your goal is to build a, an impressive physique, well, then obviously you're going to look at at who's who's done that. You know, exactly. I, I think we've said in, in many episodes, success leaves clues. And we were talking, I think we were talking the other day, and I, I, uh, I was recounting, I think it was what, my, my second ever prep. And I was training, I, I was at what, uh, Strong and Shapely Gym, you know, Bob Bonham's gym in Jersey, and uh, ran into Sean Clarita. And, you know, Sean, a uh, great guy, I've, you know, uh, known him on and off, I guess, over the years. Um, and I forgot what we were talking about, but, uh, you know, he was mid prep, and I was mid prep. And, uh, I mentioned a couple things that I was doing. And he's like, yeah, I do that too. And I'm like, Sean, you, you know, you've been doing this a long time. What did, what do you think? And I just bounced a couple things that I was doing. And and just Sean saying, oh, yeah, no, dude, everyone I know does that. You know, this guy does that and this guy does that. And I realized, seriously, 99% of the successful bodybuilders do exactly the same thing. Right, exactly. I mean, that's what, for example, when I was like preparing for my show in the summertime, I would drive myself, you know, to Bell, Bev Francis, and I have a gym that's 10 minutes away from me that I'm a member of, but I said, you know what, I'm going to be a member of G- Bev Francis because it's the East Coast Mecca, it's 45 minutes away from my house, and I would go there on Friday nights when I didn't really on a t- had a time frame, or Saturday or Sunday, or any other night that I had, let's say, more free time to myself on a work night, I would take myself there, and guess what, I would wait in traffic sometimes, uh, and I would say to myself, what the hell am I waiting in traffic f- to go to a gym for, right? But... It was the best place. It is the best place to train for a bodybuilder. Most bodybuilders, I got more out of that than overthinking things. Just being there, just going into a posing room after, just having the IFBB pros that made me feel like a child, pretty much. You know, what I'm trying to say, I would go there and I'd be like this to myself. I'd be like. I am the skinniest motherfucker in this entire gym. I'm a, I am the worst bodybuilder here. But guess what? The whole thing benefited me more than fucking around on, on the internet. I mean, I, I don't want to sound like crude here, but you know where I'm going with this, right? Well, again, the, the, the term we used to see bandied about on, on forums was majoring in the minors. Yes. And that's really what a lot of these, 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 these what, PubMed yes. study shufflers but, but, seem, seem right. to focus on. Right. But, but could you imagine not some of these? You know, we got our list here of people that we think about, but we're not going or talk about. But we're not going to. We'll never hear here. the end of it if we throw these names. Exactly, out. we can't mention them here. Well, we can, but we're not going to. Do you think any of these guys? I mean, just for, just as a social aspect, right? You know, they're free to write their stuff online. Do you think these guys really would show up to Bev's or a hardcore gym like Coliseum? And start spewing their mouth in person and telling people at Coliseum who are squatting seven hundred to eight hundred. Freaking pounds. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You're not doing that right. Uh, hey, yo, you look. You're not doing it right. Would, would they really do that in person? Well, of course not. You know, and and that's, look, there there comes the, the, the safety of, of the internet, you know, especially, and, and here we go, um, when you've built a following, 
a following of people that look up to you. You know, it, it's and, and again, this is why we're not dropping names, because uh, people go crazy. People right. go crazy, like, oh my God, we said something slightly negative. We said so and so doesn't have a good physique. Well, right. well, he doesn't, and he never did. Right. And what are we supposed to just assume that he knows all the secrets to having a good physique? And despite the fact that he trained and right. tried to have a good physique right. and never got it, we're supposed to just assume, well, but he knows the secret. Like, come on. Yes. You exactly. Know, you, dude, you can't just swallow yes. that hole. you got to yes. take that with a grain of salt. Right, right. Exactly. And also, you know, like, obviously, you know me very well. You know, we're friends. Is that, like, you know that I'm an, I'm, I'm, I'm an end result person, meaning that it's okay to even have this conversation that we're having here, this lengthy conversation, but I'm an end result person. For example... I'm not going to mention a name. There's actually a bodybuilder who I like as a bodybuilder. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a moderate fan of this guy. Not the way I'm a fan of, let's say, other people I've mentioned, like, you know, Hamdullah or Dorian or anybody that I go freaking nuts for. Or Marcus Rule, who I saw compete in 99 and a freaking New York crowd was going batshit crazy over, uh, of uh, including myself. You know, I, there's like, a you know, a pro that goes to bed for Francis. And let's just say the guy has very leisurely workouts. <laughs> actually, most of the time I was in Bev's. The guy wasn't working out. He was hanging out every time I saw him. One time I saw him doing lateral raises with like, I don't know, you see this big behemoth doing lateral raises with like, I don't know, 15 to 20 pound dumbbells. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? So like, but guess what? The guy's an IFBB pro. He's competing in high level shows. So therefore, at the end of the day, let's say he is someone who's succeeding in spite of what he's doing. That's all this rhetoric... Is all this rhetoric really called for? All this criticism, when at the end of the day, that guy's an IFBB stage, you're not. You see, mm. you know what I'm trying to say. That I meaning it's a very crude way of putting it. Like when people say, "Well, Paul Delay was lazy," or Flex Wheeler was lazy. Yeah, I, I, I would. I saw these videos. Like, you know, I think that I actually, or you or I, could like mm. perform at the same intensity that they were doing. We go beyond that. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? The end result is, they are an IFBB pro. And I'm not. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So even just to put it in the crudest manner, all this is conjecture. All of it is. You know you know where I'm going with that, right? Well yeah, at the end of the day, your 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 lab coat can't look at, at, at Flex Wheeler, you know, in his prime, what yes, 93, exactly. 94, and say <laughs> you're doing that wrong. Because exactly. this study says that Right. What, you could tell me a study says it doesn't work? Right. It's working. Right. Or they'll also say, Well, he's on roids or um, uh, you know, his genetics, genetics and drugs work great. Well, yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they do. They do. And guess what? They're working better for that guy than you. That, that, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Mm -hmm. You don't have the genes. You're not on the drugs. Well, you can't. So again, it's all conjecture. It's all bullshit at the end of the day. I go for the end result. Who's stepping on a stage or who's doing well on a stage? The lab coats it, it, at that point is irrelevant. That, that, that's just what it comes down to. I mean, should we should we go over some of the things that is it worth to go over? I mean, there's one topic that maybe I will go over. I mean, they got a little favorites. I'm not going to go into everything these uh, so-called gurus or lab coats do, but they got like what the favorite like whipping boys. Well, they got the things they like to bash. Things they like to bash, and also things that they they keep on repeating and repeating. And really, it comes down to program design, meaning that. The whole thing, and let's just touch upon one or two of them, because the rest of it would just be an entire podcast in itself about <laughs> training or nutrition, right? You know, they're sticking to these two things constantly. We hear it over and over. The bro split thing. The bro split thing doesn't work. The training frequency is not there. You know, training frequency for body part. The protein synthesis is not, you know, jacked up enough throughout the week. I mean, they, they keep saying this over, and over. that seems to be their favorite go-to things. Actually, lately, I don't hear them talk about anything else. You just need the basics, um, uh, you know. Um, oh, you gotta earn your your strength. Um, you gotta hit some type of strength ceiling before you do the bro split, which we've mentioned before. Yeah. It's times in our things. Yeah, no, we've 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 covered, but we don't have to go through that. But let's just go through the favorite one, the the protein and f synthesis and frequency one, right? See, what I'm saying here is that I've I've, I've gone off tangent a little bit. They use these studies where they measure protein synthesis in the studies versus the frequency of training per body part. Let's not even go over that then. <laughs> who, who are they using in these studies? Who Are these competitive bodybuilders? Well, that, that's the thing. All these all these studies that get picked apart, there, there aren't. There aren't any studies on experienced competitive 
bodybuilders. Right. There uh, aren't. A large number of me. There might be, let's say, I forgot the name of it because you know what? As much as, as much science as I should know my degrees, I, I, I don't really give a shit about studies all the time. Well, I mean, so, look, I know yeah. there were a couple like little write-up like articles right, right. and stuff. I know Helms right. was, was part of something where they basically uh, tracked was like hormones and stuff like right, that during, right. during a prep. Um, but that's not, you know, that's not like here, uh, here here's a sample group of 100 Bodybuilders, right, right. they all have at least five years training exactly, under their belt, right, their right. experience. It's they, like, yeah, right, there have been case studies. I mean, there have been yeah. case studies where, you know, we tracked a bodybuilder through contest prep. There yeah. are things like that. They, they, we tracked a bodybuilder, a 30-something-year-old male, mm-hmm. using this amount of roids. This is the way he reported to us. This is his preparation. That's not comparing something else. No. It's only a case study. Yes. But we haven't seen studies where there are a large number of subjects. No. And, and I don't think you're going to. And the subjects have not been pro bodybuilders. So um, natural or... Yeah, uh, that's the thing. All, all the studies that they, they just keep uh, uh, pulling out, it's, it's, you know, they're, <laughs> these guys, they don't have the backgrounds. Uh, they're usually not following a similar diet. Yes. Uh, their, their training protocols are, are laughable compared yes. to what someone uh, going to the gym right, for maximum right. hypertrophy would right. be doing. Right. And the thing is this, though, is that as far as I'm concerned, I'm not an expert in exercise physiology. Uh, I have a nutrition master's with a specialization in exercise physiology, but truthfully, that was a long time ago, and I don't remember everything about it. <laughs> and I don't work in a research setting, and I don't work in a scientific setting. I work in a clinical setting. I've only worked in clinical settings, uh, such as hospitals and nursing homes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have some, you know, admittedly forgotten some of the methods or research designs or what you call a study. Let's say, for example, a longitudinal study and all the different studies there are. I can't even name them anymore. You forget what you don't use. <laughs> um, that And you know what? Yeah. Usually it's something you don't need. Exactly. I'm not needing it right now. I'm not needing it for my salary. I don't need it right now. So therefore, I guess I don't have the interest right now to do that, right? <laughs> I don't need to. Uh, where am I going with this? I got to throw up a tangent a little bit. But, you know, the, the, it, it's not there, the research. The, the research is not there for these professional bodybuilders. I, I, we're being repetitive. But uh, do you have anything else that you'd like to add to this whole thing? Um. F- Jeez. Any t- any you know, take home things? You know the take home things. Uh, you know again the the, the whole the, the majoring in the minors, the 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 constantly hunting really for for any 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 article or study so they could post something up daily on yes. social media to remind you. I don't look like a bodybuilder, but 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 you should listen to me. Yes, yes. You should listen to me. And dude, it's it's look. I, you, you sent me text messages all the day, yes. all throughout the day, with like screenshots of different people's <laughs> yes. Instagrams, all these different coaches, and usually your comments saying, what's wrong with this person? Why, <laughs> why, why do they care so much? Yes, exactly. And, you know, my answer to you is always, well, they have to remind people following them that they're important, and you should hire them, and you can't do this on your own. Yes. And despite, you know, you know how to train, and you know nutrition, you know, well enough that you've built some muscle, um... They can quote the latest studies, and that—that's what's important. Right. Exactly. Now, I, exactly, exactly. But now I can actually go back to what I was saying: is that here's something that doesn't pan out in person. I mean, this is what we call real life, actually, versus what they find in a study. As far as I'm concerned, the protein synthesis happens after you train, but it does not mean that you gained muscle. Like mm-hmm. we always said, I mean, there's protein synthesis going on because you have, let's say, I don't know, damaged the muscle. That happens in training. You damage mm-hmm. the muscle. Sure. And it grows back. But the thing is it doesn't mean you're growing more muscle. So yeah, the protein synthesis is happening in the 24 to 48 hour period after the workout, but does it mean you're gaining more muscle from that workout? No, because most naturals don't gain muscle from individual workouts. You're not gaining, actually you're not gaining much from any individual workout at all after a while. You competed, how much stage weight did you gain in about five years? Let's see, my first first contest, 170, last contest, 178. And that was, and people told me, like, that was a lot. It is a lot. That was, now, that was now, eight pounds in, what, five years? Right. Like, so, that's, ooh. Right, so you're a guy who trained in a typical bro, so-called bro fashion. What did you do once every five to seven days? Once every four to four days, as much as that got frequent as it was? God, I think I probably hit each body part. It wasn't once a week, and it wasn't twice a week. It was, like, one and a half. Right, that exactly. That was what I typically did. Right, but there are people who excel training. Oh, Sure. Who excel training, like my sweet spot is like once every five to six days. Mm-hmm. While, while I was prepping, it was actually, I, after a while I hit the sweet spot with my four-way split, it was once every five to six days. And some guys even progress on once every seven days, non-drugated. So 
Do you really think that if you ramped up this frequency to three times a week on a full body program or a halfway <laughs> split, upper, lower, push, pull, whatever, those programs are not bad per se, would you really have gained 16 pounds versus 8 pounds? No. Would there be a difference at all? No. And you know what? Look at how many guys, I, yes. I know you've, you've showed me photos before, who advocate like, oh, you don't need direct arm training yes. or this. And then when they diet down, their physiques are, I'll, I'll say, uh, very, very subpar. Like you yes. see that they're lacking. That whole idea, and we all we all got into this when we picked up our first Muscle and Fitness exactly. magazine. Just do compound movements when you're starting out because everything will grow. Yes. And when you're first well, starting out, but when if, if you want to be a bodybuilder, you can't have anything lagging. And you don't want to lose time either. I mean, I'm all for a basic three-day program, maybe a two-way split when you're starting. But you're just getting in the gym at that point. You can't handle the volume. You can't handle the number of exercises no. for one body part. So let's say you do the full the full body part, you know, full body workouts. Maybe progress to let's say halfway body part. You know, push pull or upper lower. You know, split up a little bit. But after a while, you got to make a decision. After mm -hmm. you've got the work capacity up to spar, you gain your fitness level. You could handle an intense workout. You got to make a decision. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is a whole other thing altogether. And I'm going to wrap this up. The other thing also is that they, the, this whole thing that you got to earn your stripes as a power lifter or a a wannabe or pseudo power lifter, and then you can be a bodybuilder. See that that's another thing they push also. I mean, they, you got this nice strength ceiling, and then with the strength ceiling, then you'll go into bodybuilding training, and you'll excel more than the guy who just stuck to bodybuilding training. You see. I don't want to go and make this a training podcast this time, though. but those are the two most popular things that I thought were worth mentioning because they don't pan out in person because all the successful bodybuilders that you and I know didn't do that. And I got to say, if you talk to someone like, you know, who actually has like, you know, oh, I don't know, uh, advanced degrees like kinesiology yes. or, or really, really understands it, um, you will grow more muscle uh, being weaker. Like you will get a yeah, better stimulus exactly. effect. If you don't have a natural strength curve, and I mean this is something me and Arash talk about all the time, uh, I, I was naturally strong when I started lifting, and it was kind of a pain in the butt because you know one lifting that much weight uh, sucked, uh, put a lot of undue stress on my joints. Um, you know I, I probably uh, should have focused more on like you know uh, pre exhaust early on or yes. uh, you know more mind muscle connections and really focus on the muscle itself. But no, I. Yeah, everyone was telling me, just get stronger, just get stronger, just <laughs> yes, get stronger. See, it, but it, was, it was horrible. It was such bad advice. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't, again, they're always saying get stronger on the big three. Our view is to get stronger on all the exercises you're doing, whether it's a cable fly, whether it's a leg extension or a lunge or a squat. You just get stronger on the exercises you're doing. Not this whole thing where you got to, like, you know, do a gray skull or starting strength program first, or you got to do, like, a... I don't know, some powerlifting program of Smolov or Shiko or some shit like that. Not that there's shit, but you know what I'm saying. Like Yeah, the, whatever whatever the latest weird name program <laughs> yeah, of is. Exactly, or like Eastern Block fucking powerlifting program. So I think that just wraps it up. We, we, we've gone over everything we got to go over to hit hit the nail on the head here, right? Well, I, I certainly hope so. You know, I mean, I guess, I guess if we, what, we had to say the take home, it's like, just because someone can quote studies or uh, has a degree doesn't mean that's the person you should be listening to for your training and diet advice. Exactly. And I know that sounds nuts. That sounds absolutely yes. freaking nuts that we're saying, you know, this person has a degree. When my brother got his doctorate, my yes. brother's a doctor in physical therapy, um, and he's also competed as a bodybuilder. He had people in the same program as him, okay? And my brother was in really, really good shape when he was getting his doctorate. Yes. Ask him afterwards. Hey, can you write me a workout program so I can get in shape? And my brother would look at them, and his jaw would pop open. He's like, <laughs> "You have the same advanced degree I do." Yes. We went through gross anatomy. We dissected cadavers. You know every little thing about the body that I do, and you don't know how to get in shape. You don't know how to diet. <laughs> yes. You don't know how to train for 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 muscle hypertrophy. You 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 don't under you don't get any of it. These aren't people that just took a CSCS class. These aren't people that sat through a weekend. Uh, now I'm an ACE certified trainer. These are people with freaking doctorates. Right. In see, how the body works. Cut it right. open, muscle cysts, everything. And they don't know how to do that. See, but that's where the ingenuity comes in. The ingenuity and judgment and art of doing it. So that wraps it up. Uh, we hope we hope that we've helped you and could guide you in the right direction and, and maybe spare you some of the um, annoyances 
that you might encounter even directly from some of these people while you uh, navigate the social media landscape uh, because they're out there and they might find you. Oh, they'll find you. <laughs> they'll, they'll find, find you. you. They'll, they'll, what, they'll, they'll follow you on yeah, yeah. Uh, Instagram. No, especially if you're good, actually. Especially if you're good. <laughs> you, ever, well, yeah. you, you notice the guys who look best on YouTube are followed, are, are bashed the most. Well, you know, obviously <laughs> they're, they're doing something wrong. They're doing something different. They're doing uh, you know, uh, something that... Wouldn't work for anyone else, but it's just their genetics. Right, right. Like, like look who Blaha targets. Blaha targets Matt Ogus. Matt Ogus looks, he looks like a freaking good bodybuilder. <laughs> well, Jason Blaha targets anyone that, yeah, like you said, looks good and just doing their own thing. But that, dude, that's that's how you get attention. That's how you get attention, exactly. So uh, that wraps it up. We hope we've been helpful to you, and we will catch you next time. All right, you guys have a good one. Okay.